On today's episode, I'll be talking about a finished object, a new cast on, as well as some socks. I'm Marina and this is Pineapple Knits. This is my channel dedicated to knitting, spinning, and weaving. You can connect with me on social media at Pineapple Yarn and you can connect with me on my website at pineappleyarn.com. Thank you so much for joining me again this week and I'm sorry I missed you last week. It has been absolutely crazy. I think I've said that probably every other episode this year, <laughs> but it just is. Um, it's almost Christmas, and so last week was the last week of normal schedules, and as all of you with par uh, who are parents know, and all of you who remember being children <laughs> know that that last week before any holiday is just kind of a wash. It is crazy, you're kind of bouncing off the walls, and so last week was me trying to keep it all together, as well as managing everyone bouncing off the walls. That's kind of what it was last week. So I took a break from recording and it just means that I have more progress to share with you this week. Now, if you do hear happy noises, child noises, it's because all of my children are outside playing today and just getting ready for Christmas and they're so excited, kind of bouncing off the walls again. Uh, it's a beautiful day here. It's cold, but it's sunny, so I'm, I'll take it. I'll take it. <laughs> but I decided to wear something festive today, and this is a scarf. I think I wove this last year, right before Christmas. I realized I have nothing in my wardrobe that's red or festive or holiday, and so I wove this up, and this is, it's so fast to weave. And so I'm gonna go ahead and take it off and show you. This is a, a scarf I wove with, and I got this out and I can't even remember what yarn I used. I had this cherry red that I think I maybe was testing dyes with, and I just kind of had in my stash. I think it also may have been, um, I was testing new bases out, but I'll give you a close up. This is so, gorgeous. I love it so, so much. And I wove this on my Kromsky Presto loom, which is, um, I'll put all the description or all the details below in the description box, but it is the most fun loom to weave on because, you know, really you can make small objects, you know, scarves, coasters, things like that. But if you want to weave up a scarf as a gift, it is like lightning fast. It's so fun. So I used one skein each of this red DK weight yarn, as well as a skein of one of my colorways called Surfing Santa. And I actually found the leftover right here. And I think I may have some of this in the shop, but it is just, it's so fun. It's like ocean colors, plus a cherry red, plus speckles, so it's it's just a really fun colorway. And I used that for the weft, and then obviously, as you can tell from the fringe, the cherry red was the warp. And um, I think all the cherry red was woven or was used. I'm pretty sure, as you can tell, I can't really remember. So I'm gonna have to go back to maybe last year's episode around this time and see if I can find some more details about this. But I just did a really pretty cute little twisted fringe. I don't really know off the top of my head what dent uh, heddle I used. I don't remember any of that. I'm pretty sure I used the heddle that is included with the Presto Loom because when I purchased it, which was last, oh, maybe last summer or maybe even before that, I think it was last July. So July of 2020 maybe is when I purchased it, but they included a skein of DK, DK weight yarn. And so I used that uh, to practice with, which was perfect. So this is just such a fun scarf. I love it so much. 
and I only wear it during December, during Christmas time, but it's really, really pretty, and it's not overtly Christmas or holiday, really, um, but it's just, I just love the colors all mixed together, and I just think it has a lot of, like, visual interest, and a lot of texture, and it's just, oh, I really, really liked this project. So uh, that's what I'm wearing today. I thought I would put something festive on uh, since we are nearing Christmas. And um, yeah, it's just, it's really pretty. The other thing I really like about this scarf is that it's not always cold here during Christmas. So if I put this on, it is not too warm for a 70 degree day because it's not unheard of. So let me go ahead and show you my finished object this week. This is my cutest little guy's sweater. This is the Handstorm Sweater Junior by Petite Knit. And I had shared this with you two weeks ago. Oh my goodness, I love it so much. It's just the cutest, cutest sweater. I used one of my Colorways Nutmeg and Oh, it's just this rich caramel, like deep caramel color. It's so pretty. And he has the same coloring I do. And so it's just so, so pretty. It's, it's handsome on him. <laughs> I was thinking of it on myself, thinking this would be so pretty on me. Anyway, <laughs> this was a great pattern. I enjoyed it so much. I'd never done a rolled neckline. And so that was an interesting challenge and just kind of an interesting design feature on this sweater. Uh, the one thing, I did knit the third size, which is kind of like a size three to a four, and I used all the called for needles in the pattern. So the main needle is a, a size six, which is a four millimeter, and usually I size down a needle size, but that is the needle I use for DK weight. So um, I think it makes the best fabric. So that's what I use. And I feel personally like this is a really generously sized pattern. This sweater is going to fit him for a while. So as you can tell, you know, the width of the sweater and then <laughs> the lengths of the arms, he's, um, I would say he's average size, but you know how toddlers are? They're just, um, they're, they have short arms. I mean, <laughs> it's just the way it is. So I would say this is it's a generously sized sweater on him right now. The good thing is I do have an extra skein of this colorway that I had saved. And so this would be no problem at all just to take this uh, cuff off and make the sweater longer because I ended up knitting several inches past where I needed to be on his arm. So I had him try the first, uh, after I'd finished the first sleeve, I had him try it on, it was way too long. So all I would need to do is just take this rib off basically and make the, sle the sleeve longer. What I had to do at the end, because I hadn't reached the uh, specified number of stitches for the rib, is I did a series of quick decreases at, during the last row. So I had to decrease, I think I decreased eight stitches which is crazy to get the correct number for the cuff. And so I actually have not let him wear this at all because I wanted to share it with you first because I know that this little sweater is really going to get so much use. So yeah, I think this turned out so cute. I love it. It's a little wrinkled from being in, being in my bag and um, kind of being stashed away. But all in all, this is just such a great pattern. It's exactly what I wanted. I wanted a really simple sweater for him and, um, you know, just really cozy and comfortable, something he could move around in really well. I didn't want any, um, any kind of features, buttons or anything like that. So just a really cute pullover sweater. I really enjoyed the pattern as well and it was really fun. So that one is finished and I will take a photo and let him wear it. Hopefully he will keep it nice enough where he can wear it to different things. 
but I don't think he will. It'll wash up fine. It's Superwash Merino Nylon. It's my Lonnie DK base, and so my DK base that I keep in the shop actually has nylon in it. It's the same um, 7525 blend that I have for my sock yarn, so it's really durable. It's great for kids. It's great for accessories, hard wearing um, garments, or for gifts because it won't shrink. So um, I have knit several sweaters with non superwash yarn, and every time an accident happens to it where it gets washed. So it's just kind of what I have to stick with these days in the house, unless it's maybe um, one of my sweaters. But yeah. So this is done. I thought it was really cute and yeah, so that's off the needles. So I had to cast something else on and I have wanted to do this, not this specific pattern for a while, but I wanted to do something with my Plotilope for quite a while. So I purchased this Plotilope. I feel like I've had it for a while and I checked when I had purchased it and it was last February, which makes sense because it's just such cold weather. <laughs> and I was, I know last year I was thinking, I need to make warmer sweaters. So I purchased a whole bunch of Plotilope and I'll put a link below where I purchased it. But this is the colorway beige. I think it's number, the number three. And it is a really pretty, mix of grays and caramel browns and it's just a very very pretty color and I don't know um, I purchased it because it was one of their warmer toned colors I don't usually wear gray not saying that I never do but um, I try to stick with warmer colors for my skin tone and I found this pattern and I don't know how I found it, but it is the Marvel Sweater by Petite Knit. Another Petite Knit pattern, which is funny because I've only knit one of her patterns before. It's just really funny. So uh, now I'm on pattern number three. <laughs> but I saw it and I was like, that is the cutest sweater. It was just so cute. So I did a gauge swatch with my Plotilope as well as this... Uh, no way mohair silk that I carry in the shop and I custom dyed this to have a warmer tone than this Plotilope and because I wanted a little bit of a marled effect I wanted to warm up this beige color but I didn't want it too different so it was perfect this was exactly the color I wanted and I don't carry this color in the shop but if in case you ever want it, please let me know because I do remember how what I how I dyed this up. So I started it. I started the marble sweater, and here is the neckline. <laughs> so as you can tell, it is very chunky. It is incredibly chunky and bulky and squishy. It is so squishy. So just like the Hanson Sweater Junior that I just showed you, this has a folded down neckline, which I think is going to be just so cute. I love it so much. And I am using, to get gauge, this is crazy, I'm using the recommended needle size because I've found that with petite knit patterns that I don't have to size down a needle. So these are size 15 needles which I believe is a 10 millimeter. I could be wrong. You can see how chunky these are. These are Addy Turbos, and I normally use Addy's all the time, but they don't have a size 15 in the interchangeable set <laughs> because they're so big. But to get the recommended gauge, which is nine stitches per four inches, which is crazy, nine stitches, um, I'm using four strands of Plotilope, and so I have this actually just all sitting on top of my granny square blanket, so I'll just show you how I have this set up. So I have two 
cakes or two plates of the Plotilope. I have two cakes of my Noe mohair silk. And so the Plotilope, and I'm sorry, I should have said this before. Plotilope is made from Icelandic wool, which has, it's a double coated sheep, Icelandic sheep bar. And so you have a real soft um, undercoat and then you have the waterproof long stranded, long strands. And so these come together in this form of yarn and it is an unspun yarn. It's like the thinnest strands of roving basically. So let me give you a close up. I'm sure many of you have heard of this and know about this because it has become popular, more popular with um, outside of Iceland in past years but it's incredibly warm. This is very, very warm wool. And so um, it comes in these um, plates. They're, they call them plates because they're just these flat rolls, basically. And um, I am using two of these and I am knitting two strands from each. So I'm taking it from the inside as well as the outside. So I'm doing four strands of that and then two strands of the um, Noe mohair silk, which is a lace weight. So all in all, this is very bulky and this is how bulky the strands are. So hopefully you can see that. It's just, it's very bulky. But each strand of this Plotilope is very It's very thin. So I think um, unspun, maybe I've got a little bunch here, I'll just show you. Unspun, I think it is about a sport weight. So if you knit two strands together, which is what a lot of patterns call for, it ends up being about a worsted weight. And I had knit up a gauge swatch and I didn't share it with you. Um, I don't even know where I put it now but it was for um, a beautiful color work sweater that used Plotilope, or it may have just used Letilope. I can't remember which of, those, which of those it used, but it was so thick. It was a stranded color work pattern, and the gauge swatch, it was just so thick, and I didn't like the fabric of it, and in order to get gauge, I just, I, I wasn't feeling it. It wasn't flowing, and so when I saw this, pattern, I knew that in order to get the jumbo factor of this, I could put uh, strands of Lope, or Plotilope together as well as mohair silk to just um, soften it a little bit, give it more of a halo. It has so much of a halo. And it did. I mean, I got Gage right away and I just, oh, I just love it so much. So, so far it's really nice. I don't find Icelandic wool too scratchy or rustic or uncomfortable, um, especially I have found with cold weather because it gets drier here. Even though I'm right by the ocean, I mean, we always have moisture in the air, but I've found that I cannot wear anything with mohair in it or anything that is not superwash wool. We'll just say that. If it's not superwash merino, <laughs> I cannot wear it when it is, we'll say, upper 60s and above. If it's anything, uh, it has to be below maybe upper 60 degrees for my skin to tolerate it because normally, I mean, I'm not going to wear a sweater in the summer or really any kind of warm weather. <laughs> I'm not going to wear a sweater, but I have found that on those warm days in early spring or late fall, um, I have found that they are very humid. It will get very humid or unusually humid for that time of year, and I can't stand something like this on my skin or um, a mohair. I cannot handle it. Even a non-superwash wool cannot handle it. 
I don't know why it's just very prickly maybe in the humidity now if it's cold you know if it is 40 degrees and it's raining you better believe I'm gonna have this on all day <laughs> all day I will have this on because it is cold it gets really really cold here in the winter for me <laughs> so I'm really excited about this I think it's going to fly off my needles and it is so fun. I'm having such a great time knitting this right now. So I'm done with the neckline and I am on to the yoke. This is a top-down raglan sweater. So it's just super easy and fun. And I feel like it's one of those patterns where I think the original pattern calls for three different strands of yarn held together. I feel like with this pattern, you could mix and match weights of yarn, colors of yarn. I, I feel like it's a really great springboard for your creativity. You could mix DK weights, fingering weights, if you have some mohair, if you have some alpaca, um, even like a boucle yarn, you could mix all these together and knit the sweater and just, I just feel like the possibilities are really endless with this type of sweater that uses multiple strands held together. So I'm super excited about this and I'll definitely be sharing more as I go along. And I will record next week, but um, I'm just really interested to see how fast this comes along because even though it's chunky, you know, you would think that it would really fly, but you're you're knitting slow, more slowly than you would with fingering weight yarn anyway. So um, it's always interesting to see how those, those things go. The last thing I wanted to share with you is that I was able to sneak in a few minutes on my circular sock machine, and it is an Erlbacher Gearheart Speedster. I'll link it below in case you're interested in checking it out. But this is how I knit my socks. Um, as most of you will probably know, this is just how I knit my socks these days for the most part. And I have been, um, I love hand finishing them though. I absolutely love that part. But I threw on some new yarn. I wanted to see how it knit up. So this is the first sock that I knit up. And I'm just, oh my goodness, I love how that knit up. This is an end of the day colorway that I'm going to have in the shop next Friday. And I just, I absolutely love how this knit up. And it's, it's a gorgeous skein of yarn. But I was just enjoying myself so much, I forgot to put in a contrasting heel is what I wanted to do. So instead, I added the toe uh, as a contrasting toe. And that is, um, I used one of my colorways, Pink Hibiscus. And it's actually back here as well. You can't really see it because it's in a shadow. But I will have some of this in the shop as well on Friday. But um, what I plan on doing with all these socks is just adding a ribbed cuff. So I have, I normally do a hung hem on them, which is just kind of a folded down hem on the tops. And um, I really enjoyed ribbing my socks from my sock snake. So I have, I'm almost done with that fourth sock here. And what I've been doing is just adding a, either a one by one rib like here or doing a two by two rib onto these socks. And I've just really enjoyed it. So that's what I'm going to do with all of these socks. So for this one, this end of the day colorway, I just added uh, this really cute little pink hibiscus toe. And I'll also make the ribbing that color as well. But I did knit another sock. But the third sock that I was able to sneak out to the studio and knit up, I was so excited. It is a yarn I've had in my stash for so long. I cannot even tell you. So this was a Christmas colorway. Finally, I was able to knit up a Christmas colorway that I've had in my stash for years and years. This is from the Yarn Jar. And I don't remember the colorway. I'll put it below. I have had this for so long, years and years. And I caked this up. I think I told you 
maybe a couple of months ago that I'd caked up some Christmas yarn and set it right next to my sock machine. So anytime I had a minute, I could just come out to the studio and crank some socks. And um, so I don't feel like such a failure this Christmas because I was able to crank up one pair, <laughs> one pair of socks. And I probably won't even be able to wear them this Christmas, but that's okay because I feel like I've made progress. You know, it took a couple years for this to actually leave my stash, and then it took a couple of months for me to get it onto my machine. So I'm making progress, you know. So if I have these next year to wear, it's I'm definitely making progress. But I have a really cute, I found a cute mini skein in my stash that matched perfectly. So it's this gorgeous deep red color and look how pretty this is together. I thought that matched so well. So I am gonna do the uh, ribbed cuff in this. And this was a little mini skein that I received in a swap years ago. And it doesn't have a tag on it, so um, I have a couple of guesses who I received it from, but I don't wanna say because I don't remember. But, um, so anyway, I was super thankful I had that in my stash and um, I'm gonna use that for the rib. It's gonna be really fun. So I felt pretty accomplished that I was able to knit some socks up on my machine and use that because I just, I love cranking socks. It took me so long to finally figure it out and um, and now that I do, and now that I, I can do it, it's like riding a bicycle. You just don't really forget. And um, I, I enjoy it so much. So I'll be working on those. Um, I still have one more of my um, Kirby Werby from uh, 2019. Nope, 2020. I think these are from last year. And so I have knit three so far without heels. And then I just have one more to go. I'm working on, I think I'm working on the toe on one. I'm nearly finished. I leave the heels off on these so I can gift them to people and depending on their shoe size, it will fit them. And so I just, I love doing that. And I've done it in the past for gifts and I just think it's, um, it always turns out really great. And just to throw an afterthought heel into a sock really doesn't take that long. So you're doing most of the work ahead of time and then to gift these is really great. But I think these are so pretty. I still can't get over how pretty these are. So I've shown them every week, I think, because I love them so much. They're just so unique. But anyway, that is it for socks and all the knitting. Um, I did want to give you a weaving loom progress update, I guess. Um, I did contact Kromsky about my broken loom. I have a um, Kromsky Harp Forte, which is a 32 inch loom. And basically they just recommended gluing the cracks and using a hose clamp on it, which is what I had done to get through the weaving. And so uh, I had a really, really kind viewer reach out um, months ago when all of this had happened and he gave me some tips on how to fix my loom. So I'm going to go ahead and do that and maybe just use a hose clamp on it. Um, other than that, I will have to purchase a replacement beam. And I don't even know if the cost will be worth the value of the loom, to be honest. Um, it's a pretty inexpensive loom as far as looms go, but we'll see. I have the whole thing taken apart right now um, because it's really going to need a lot of work. The um, yeah, I'm not even gonna go into it, but it's not a hill I wanna climb right now, <laughs> especially around the holidays. It's just too crazy right now. So it's a little disappointing. Um, I love weaving so much, and I just think that the effect that weaving has on um, variegated yarns and hand-dyed yarns like this, it's just so striking and so beautiful and definitely not an effect you can have with knitting or crocheting it's just it's just a whole different craft and produces a different outcome and it's so fun so I'm a little disappointed that all that has happened but um, in case you have had problems with your loom 
Um, I just I like to give those little tips just in case you're looking for some kind of help um, because I know I've found very little myself. I've found very little resources about this and information. So hopefully that will help any of you out there. Hopefully this is an uncommon problem and it probably is because it's, uh, yeah, hopefully this is just an uncommon problem. And other than that, I'm getting ready for a shop update, which will be, which will be next Friday, December 31st at 8 p.m. Eastern Time at pineappleyarn.com. I will be doing a shop update preview next week, though, so you can see all the yarns that I'll be putting into the shop. I hopefully will have enough time to sew up some more kits as well. I always do a New Year's kit and... I don't know if I will this year. Hopefully I'll have enough time to get one into the shop, but I've dyed a ton of yarn for this update. I've just had that much more time in the month of December to get my clubs finished and then dye all the yarn for the update. So that's really exciting. And um, yeah, I'll be sharing more with you next week about that. Well, we're getting ready for Christmas here. I plan on doing some Christmas cards later today and getting gifts ready. I've wrapped almost all my gifts. I did that earlier this week. <laughs> and yeah, so I think I've done all that. I think I have one more gift to wrap and we will be all set. But I hope that you are able to spend some time later this week with people you love and I hope you have a very Merry Christmas and Happy Holidays. I will see you next week with another episode. Until then, I hope you have an awesome day. <laughs> Bye.